So I did a quick search of the Ark of the Covenant on YouTube and I found a whole heap of nonsense. Just really? Yes, the Ark of the Covenant's been found, but if you want to know the real story behind it, stick around. Before we talk about the Ark, or if it's been found in a cave somewhere or anything else really, let's start at the beginning. What's the Ark? More importantly, what does the Bible say that it is? The Ark of the Covenant makes its first appearance in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. In very simple terms, the Ark is a fancy wooden chest that holds the true presence of God. That's a short and sweet version, but let's dig a little deeper. After their exodus from Egypt, God commands his people, led by Moses, to build the Ark, a tabernacle, and a bunch of other things that they will need in order to worship him. God himself tells Moses exactly what he wants built, how to build it, what materials to use, everything. He even provides details on how those things are to be used and cared for. God didn't leave anything to chance. He told Moses exactly what he wanted. God's instructions are very, very, very specific. If you want to see the level of detail, check them out for yourself. The construction requirements are found in the second half of the book of Exodus, starting on chapter 25. And the instructions on how to use and care for every single thing is found in the book of Leviticus. As part of the construction of the ark, God tells them to place two cherubim on the cover and that cover to be named the mercy seat. God tells Moses, the cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. Upon its completion, God wanted three items placed in the ark. The first item was the tablets with the Ten Commandments. The Bible calls them the covenant, but that's just another name for them. The tablets are also known as the tables of the law because the Ten Commandments are the ten universal laws that were written with the finger of God. The second item to be placed in the ark was the rod of Aaron. Both Moses and his brother Aaron used this wooden rod when they led their people out of Egypt, and it also played a role in several miracles. If you remember the ten plagues, this was a rod they used to turn the Nile River's water into blood. On another occasion, the rod blossomed and produced almonds. God let it blossom to let everyone know that Aaron was his choice to be high priest. The last item to be placed in the ark was the manna, also called the bread from heaven. This manna was very well known to the people of Israel because that is what they ate every single day for 40 years when they were wandering in the desert. Every day, manna would appear, just enough to get them fed for the day, and on Friday, they would receive a double portion so they didn't have to work on their holy day, the Sabbath. I know this sounds like a lot of info, but hang in there. It will all come together in a bit. So that was the ark. Now on to the tabernacle. The tabernacle was basically a big tent meant to be a mobile place of worship. The ark was to be kept inside the tabernacle in a place called the Holy of Holies behind a veil. The veil was there to keep everyone physically away from the ark because if you were not careful, it could kill you. But more on that in a little bit. Once the construction on everything is completed, the tabernacle and everything inside it is set up for the first time. Then something awesome happens. God physically shows up. The cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. At that moment, the ark becomes the Lord's physical presence among his people. God told Moses, there I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are upon the Ark of the Covenant, I will speak with you of all that I will give you. With everything set up to worship him, God selects the tribe of Levi as priests. And as I mentioned earlier, they are led by Aaron as high priest. As for everyone else, God warns them, they must not touch the holy things, lest they die. The Ark in particular is so holy that the high priest himself could only enter behind the veil once a year. And when he did, he had to follow very specific instructions. If he made a single mistake behind the veil, even inadvertently, he could die. Think about that. No one could even come in to rescue him because they could also die as well. One example of someone that died because they touched the ark was a guy by the name of Uzzah. At the time, King David and his men were on their way to Jerusalem and the ark was being pulled by oxen. Uzzah was walking alongside the ark when the oxen began to stumble. He reaches out to steady the ark and he dies instantly by touching it. He was just trying to make sure the ark wouldn't fall, but the rules were explicit, no exception. Now you might think that this might be a bit harsh, 
But you have to remember that the ark was the physical manifestation of God on earth. God warned them about the consequences of mishandling the holy item, especially the ark. Uzzah was careless in following God's command and paid with his life. So fast forwarding a bit, King Solomon replaces the tabernacle by building the ark a temple in Jerusalem. The ark is housed there for about 400 years until the year 586 BC. That year, the Babylonians enter Jerusalem and conquer it. They destroyed the temple and stole everything inside, except the ark. Why didn't they take the ark? Because it wasn't there. According to the book of Maccabees, a guy by the name of Samuel took it and hid it in a cave on Mount Nebo. The guys hiding it tried to mark its location, but Samuel didn't let them do it. He tells them that the hiding place shall be unknown until God gathers his people together again and shows his mercy. So the Bible itself gives us the key to finding the ark. The ark will be found when God gathers his people again and shows his mercy. So when will this be? I'll give you a hint. So finally, what we've all been waiting for, the location of the Ark of the Covenant. Drum roll, please. The true Ark of the Covenant is found in the book of Revelation. It's been under our noses all along. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, loud noises, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and cried out in her pangs of birth in anguish for delivery. Mary is revealed as a new Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you're thinking that's it, one Bible passage, and she's the new Ark of the Covenant? Not quite. Remember when the ark was completed and God physically appeared for the first time? The cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. To cover can also be translated as to overshadow. Remember the purpose of the cherubim? To overshadow the mercy seat of the ark? So what does the angel Gabriel tell Mary at the Annunciation? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Coincidental usage of words? Nope. I hope this doesn't overshadow the fact that God is physically manifesting himself again through Jesus. Need a little more? Here's another comparison, this time from the Gospel of Luke. If you read it on your own, you will absolutely miss it. But once you see the connection, you will never miss it again. Remember when King David was traveling with the Ark to Jerusalem? Let's compare what happens on that journey to Mary's journey on her way to visit Elizabeth after she finds out she's pregnant with baby Jesus. I highly recommend that you dust off your Bible and make time to read these passages so you can see the similarities for yourself. You can find them here. So David is traveling with the Ark and Mary is traveling with baby Jesus in her womb. David dances before the ark because he's happy to have the Lord with him. Baby John the Baptist leaps with joy in Elizabeth's womb because Jesus came to visit them. David asks, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? Elizabeth asks, and why is this granted me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? David stores the ark at Obed-Edom's house for three months. And Mary stays at Elizabeth's house about three months. These parallels in the Bible are intentional. Luke wanted people to understand that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant and that Jesus is the new physical presence of God on earth. Something else you might have missed. Remember the three things inside the Ark? God placed them in the Ark for a very specific reason. The Ten Commandments represented the old law. Jesus is the new law. The rod of Aaron marked his role as high priest. Jesus is the eternal high priest. And we can't forget the manna, the bread from heaven. Jesus is the true bread from heaven. Jesus is the bread of life. These clear parallels within the Bible, in part, are the basis of many of the church's teachings about our mother Mary. This is why the church teaches that the Virgin Mary was conceived without sin. This is why the church teaches that Mary remained a virgin her entire life. If the ark was so sacred that it couldn't be touched by man, how could she have been touched by man? It is absolutely fitting to say that Mary is the ultimate ark of the covenant. She held our Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, in her womb. Now, I want to take a minute to clarify a few things if you're not Catholic. Catholics do not worship Mary. 
We worship God alone. We venerate Mary. We ask her to pray for us. We do this because of her intimate relationship with Jesus. She's his mom. Every single thing that we do as Catholics centers around Jesus. And by the same token, everything that we do as Catholics has a basis in Scripture. Okay, so I know that I covered a lot in this video, but I think that in order for us to love Mary as much as Jesus did, we need to know more about her. So what do you think about our mother Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant? Let me know in the comment. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end of this video. Hit that like button and share this video to help me get God's message of mercy out to as many people as possible. Also, if you like this content, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell to be notified when we post more videos. Please pray for me and I will definitely pray for you. And remember to live your life for God's greater glory. God bless.